Nation, we got a goodie. Let's get it. Yo, salute to everybody already here in the building, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. I got one of my dogs on, man. I haven't had them on for a while. You know, they've been doing really big things over there on their channel. I've been doing my Dougie. This is one of my guys, man, that was on the channel before it really, really took off, man. One of my guys that I really, really trust when it comes to talking Raider football. You know what I mean? We're not going to wait anymore, you guys. I'm going to bring my guy, man. Soto, yeah, what's good, brother? Chilling, baby. Thanks for having me on, man. It's, this is gonna be fun. Hey, I'm man, look, this. so it's been probably what two years, yeah, somewhere around there, like a wow, year and a half, yeah. two years, right? Yeah, it's been a minute. And, and I see you guys, man, over at the Autumn Windbags, man. Salute you guys. If you guys have not subscribed to my guys yet, what are y'all waiting for? And we're gonna throw the uh, throw the link in the chat the whole show. So, you know, everybody go over there and subscribe to our guys, uh, you know, but um, yeah, man, we, you know, it's been a minute, man. You know, you guys have been growing over there. You know, we've been doing our thing over here. I just want to say, brother, before we get into anything, I'm proud of you guys. I love you guys. Likewise, you know, bro. You're doing your thing. I see, I see my guy over there doing the UFC thing. Bro. You know what I mean? Bro, it's, it's getting big with, 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 with bro, man. And RJ, I, love man. I like to tease RJ. I like to tease him a lot because he's fun to tease. Because he deadpans everything, but you know it gets through because like his eyes get wide and he's like his lips get tightened. But like he does a lot, he works like he'll be in Brazil and be like, Yo, man, what time can we do this? Yeah. And it's like he'll wake up at four in the morning and we'll do a show. I he'll be it. anywhere in the world. Sweden, he did we did Sweden once. Uh I mean he had ass uh he had ass uh uh Wi-Fi in France, so we, we couldn't do that one. But dude, he if you want, if you like seeing two dudes at a bar just arguing over shit, that's RJ and I for sure. And bro, that's what we did. Remember when we did our show? So I went over to your guys' show. We we did yeah. we did a stream over there, and then uh, you guys, you know, I uh, said it's oh it's all good to to uh you know take it, put it on your channel as well. But I remember me and you were just killing car, and RJ was like, man, what are you guys talking about, man? Like, he's the guy. He's the guy. I always remember that conversation, because me and you were like, damn, they're double teaming, bro. <laughs> it was like, it was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? The but, thing was, man, like, I wanted him to be the guy that people were saying he was. Because yeah. he was already on our team. Like, why would I not? Yeah. But it's like, after a while, it's like your girl cheats on you so many times. It's like, yo, dude, like you got to see it for what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I mean, yeah. we're having we're having kind of a similar situation with Aiden O'Connell right now. I love Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. I loved him. The first time I saw a picture of him, like last February, I'm like, oh, dude, this guy looks like Farva. Like him and I were like one of the first. I think they were the first that I heard about Farva. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, okay, man, I like him a lot. But, like, a lot of our fans are like, yo, man, he's a lot better than you're giving him credit for and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I mean, I try to be objective because it doesn't do us any good for me to pump up somebody more than they are. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it was funny. Me and Wasted had this conversation today on the phone about Aiden O'Connell because, you know, he's not the biggest Aiden guy. You know, he's like, I like him, but I'm not, I'm not a major. And I said, you know why people go to bat for this guy is because – he was the guy that came in that took over for the guy. You know what I mean? So a lot of people that didn't like Derek Carr, we're like, we're hoping and praying that Aiden is the guy. So a lot of us are like, prove it wrong. We're like, God, man, we left Derek. We moved on from Derek Carr and brought this guy. But there's a lot, you know, we can't we can't put that much pressure on Aiden, no one, because he wasn't supposed to be the guy anyway. No, you know what I mean? Like, so 
here's my stance, and I'll make it quick because you know. No, you hey, probably, bro. Hey, the floor is yours. Team. Do your thing. Let's have some fun. So, there's a couple things I feel a quarterback needs to do to be successful. Number one, he's got to be able to protect himself, yes. right? He has to know the system. He has to know protection. He has to know where the blitz is coming from. He has to make sure he doesn't get killed out there, okay? Yeah. If he mm -hmm. can't protect himself, he has no business being out there. Yep. He has to know his progressions, okay? He has to know mm -hmm. what system he's running and where to go with the ball. All of it. But that's like 95% of the quarterbacks in the NFL, okay? Mm -hmm. What separates the average from the good, good, great, great to elite is how you do when the defense is right. When the defense is right, how do you still make a play? And yeah. then on top okay. of that is how often – can you make that play? Like if you're Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, you know, even if you're right, they'll still burn you. Yeah. Oh, facts. Facts. So what what in my mind, okay, what makes those plays happen? Yeah, ha they have to be mobile enough to extend the play, mm -hmm. and they have to have the arm enough, not a crazy arm, but an arm enough to make those off-platform throws into tight windows. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that they know Colin has a weak arm, I'm saying he doesn't have a strong. NFL quarterback arm. You would I wouldn't necessarily say he has a strong quarterback NFL arm. I think he has a decent arm. I think he's very accurate. Mm -hmm. I think he can get it down there where he needs to. Yeah. But things have to be pretty clean around him for him to get the ball out there with some zip on it. So that that's my only thing. And, okay. and I don't know that somebody age of what 24, 25, 26, how old he is right now, yeah. mm -hmm. can make a big jump in his athleticism and his arm strength to be able to jump into that level. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing that scares me is he came from a pro style, you know, offense with Purdue, right? So he didn't traditionally have to use the athleticism, use his legs. Last year, Josh McDaniels, we know that he wants a statue in the pocket. He doesn't want a guy to use his legs. That's not what he wants to do. The Tom Brady years, that's those were golden for Josh McDaniels in his system, right? Getsy, man, to me, it, this – this is, is kind of up in the air right now, Juan, because we don't know what this system is oh, without Justin Fields because he didn't want Justin Fields to run the system anyway. You know what I'm saying? But he had to kind of tailor his offense around him, and they had some success, but they had a lot of negative shit that happened out there with, with that Chicago offense. Uh, you know what I mean? So we don't know what this Getsy offense is, and really we don't know who Aiden O'Connell is at this point yet either within this system. So it's going to be interesting, but I think we can both agree, right, that we need another quarterback at the end of the day. Yeah, we need another one. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Aiden O'Connell. I love mm -hmm. him as a person. Yeah, yeah, From eight to one at Purdue, Purdue is not – I mean, it's not a great Big Ten school, but it's not a, a an ass school. You no, know what I'm saying? Like, not at all. And, if you, and the, the first tape I put in – the first tape that I put in I watched was the Motor City Bowl against Tennessee. Okay. And I'm like, yep. Jesus. If he had if, – if his senior and junior years were flipped, he would be like a second-round pick. Yes. Easily. Right? Easily. Easily. Maybe, maybe even a first, maybe. to be honest. Yeah. Dude, he had 500 – what, 550 yards and like five touchdowns against yep. Tennessee? Like That dude, one game was insane. Thing, yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. So there's that. And, and I'm looking – all right. Josh McDaniels treated Aiden O'Connell like shit, mm -hmm. right? The one mm -hmm. thing that I, I think of, okay, he started him against the Chargers, but he didn't do anything against Khalil Mack, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He called the same play that he called earlier in the game when he threw the interception. It's the <laughs> same damn play he called like a, a quarter before. Like yeah. you're not setting your guy up for success. And he didn't, but, but Aiden knew he didn't want him in there anyway, Juan. Like, like Aiden knew like Jimmy Everybody was – Everybody did. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. the after after the Bears game, when 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 a reporter asked him, "Well, Aiden O'Connell went in there in his only drive and scored a touchdown. Why why you wait so long to put him in the game?" And you yeah. remember what Joshua Daniel said? It ain't the preseason. Yeah. yeah. Like what, what? He cooked him in and and I was like, "Wow, bro." So yeah. look, I get it. I get that the first what eight games of his career, he was an afterthought. He wasn't yeah. paid any attention to, mm -hmm. and it was just basically him and Coach Bo. Just kind of like you know doing the doing their thing, yeah. And I I understand that. What my thinking is, even with the jump from year one to year two, there is that those two things that I mentioned that I don't know how much better they can get. Yeah. And 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 that's what worries me. Now I'm not saying that he can't make it happen in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not saying that the Drew Breeses out there of the world don't. You know, hey yeah. Matt Stafford is still 
doing big things over there when he can stay healthy, right? Yeah, we got to talk about him too. About the, I mean, the Rams are like a sneaky pick to get, get a quarterback early. Yep, definitely. What's going to happen definitely. with that neck, right? Yep. But, exactly. Yo, uh, it's possible, but the thing is, is your 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 lane, your window is ee, it gets a little tighter yeah. when you, you you can't make those big plays when the defense is right. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm not saying that he's not it or he can't make it happen. It's just, this, the, the odds are against him, but the odds have been against him before at Purdue. He went in from a walk on to, you know, start. he was like the seventh, eighth guy on, he the, on, the, on the depth chart. Yeah. And he yeah. made it happen. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not counting them out for sure, but the mustache Real like quick. that, no way. Salute to Niles. I appreciate you, sis. As always, salute to all the new members in the building because of Niles. If you guys want to become a member like sis, hit the link is pinned up top. One of the best ways to support what we do over here at OLV. Salute to the Mokes. He always puts this in the comment section. AOC MVP incoming. Salute to my guy, the Mokes. And salute to Christian, man. I needed this show. Thank you, man. Salute to you, brother. Thank you for being here to rock with us, man, as always. And once again, you guys, do me a favor. A hug. I see the my father in the building. If you can, put the Autumn Windbags link from YouTube in the comment section, man. Let's, let's get that grooving. Let's run those numbers up. Uh, for my guy Juan, man, and my guy RJ, man. So I want to ask you, man. Realistically, okay, we're at thirteen right now, right? We're kind of, no. we're kind of in purgatory right now at thirteen in terms of needing a quarterback. If we didn't need a quarterback, we'd be fine because this this is a talented, talented it's top heavy man. It's top heavy. Yes, bro. Like, like, but in terms of top every position, position, like, like, it, like, if you had a quarterback, right, and all you needed was a right tackle, guess what? At thirteen. Oh. Beautiful, because there's going to be a run of receivers, a run of quarterbacks in that top 10, and probably a few um, a few edge rushers here and there may be sprinkled in, right? So at 13, you're sitting pretty. You're like, you know what? Back, you're like, yes, please. Yeah, like right. we're good to go. But realistically, man, I I'm going to be honest. I know there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, uh, AP loving um, Aiden, which he should put that out there because that's his young guy. He got the job, you know, partially because he threw the kid out there. He sat Jimmy and he ran with the young buck and, and they had some success. Right. So I, I believe the hype with he loves Aiden, but I don't think he's going to put his job on the line for Aiden O'Connell. I don't think that Tom Telesco coming off of the situation that he had with the Chargers is going to say, I'm OK with running with the Aiden O'Connell year one. And I don't think that gets he is going from a situation in Chicago where he had a really athletic quarterback like Justin Fields to a statue in the pocket like Aiden O'Connell. Some jobs can be potentially on the line. We need a quarterback. What are you doing at 13, Juan? Like, if if, if we're on the board right now, okay, mm -hmm. and realistically, Jaden is gone, Drake is gone, um, 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 Caleb is gone, what are you doing at 13? With Penix on the board, Nick's on the board, those right tackles on the board for Waga and, and JC Latham and other, what are you doing if you are the GM right now at 13? I would get the best either tackle or corner available at 13. If I had to stick at 13, that's okay. what I would do. Okay. Um, I'll tell you one thing in, in the tape that I, I haven't watched a ton of tape. Last year I watched a ton of tape and it was a total waste of time. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, so I watched, <laughs> I watched a little bit of tape just on the mock, like the main guys and like a couple of mocks. I, you know, I, I wanted to get, get to know a couple of guys, right? And I'm telling you, from my eyes, the gap between, let's say, the middle, like the last five, right? There's like the, the big six, right? The big six mm -hmm. quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. The last four and the top two. So me, my top two are Caleb and, and, and Daniels, right? Mm -hmm. okay. That next four is a lot closer to Spencer Rattler than they are to the top two. I agree. So if we end up taking a Spencer Rattler in the second or maybe the early third, if we have to move up into the second or something like that, mm -hmm. if we end up getting that, I call Spencer Rattler and I called him from the very beginning. I called him Caleb Light. Yeah. He's okay. like Caleb, but just a little bit like the arm talent isn't as good, but it's so really good. Yes. His vision is good, really good, but not as good as, you know, it's he's mobile and he could run, but just not as like he's not, he doesn't have that pop. That extra, yeah, that Caleb brings. I agree. He's still, really, really good. Yeah. So, so if we do something like that, I mean, I'm cool with that because look, you can't go in there and you can't take like a like a, a Pratt, you know, because that's that's we got two of those already. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Minshew can scramble around, but he's not a super mobile. He had like under 200 yards rushing last year. I've been saying that too, bro. I know the, all the mid round Pratt talk out of Tulane. It, it, it oh, all man. sounds good, bro, but you're literally adding a third guy to the room. It's Same not going to really add any value to the room. Same dude. If I were to do that, I would wait an extra round. And I would get Milton. Okay. So, so you like Joe Milton. If gonna sit, if someone's going to sit anyway, you might as well have him have something that the other two guys don't. Okay. Okay. So, so basically what you're saying is if we miss out on those top guys, add a guy like Milton that has a different skill set, right? That arm strength is different. That it's the top of the line in, in this year's draft. He'd have right? a top three arm if he was in the NFL today. But the thing that scares me is, bro, can Getsy bring that out of him? Because the problem with him is the accuracy issues. One, like that's the issue. Like the guy has all the arm strength in the world. Like if 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 if, if you can win the Super Bowl off arm strength alone, this guy is going to go for three a three p. You know what I mean? Easy. But the accuracy. I watched him at the combine. I went out there with Stu. I watched him live. It, it was it was a it was Radical. a beautiful no yes, but it was a beautiful thing to watch in terms of. You know, just simple routes. Hey, just just nine route. Just throw yeah. the bomb, right? Like you're gonna take the top off of this off of this venue because it's it's easy. It's just a ping. And it, but when you got guys running routes, you know what I mean, and you're asking, you know, other things from this guy, the accuracy issue is just it's 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 glaring. It's glaring. And I, I if we're gonna take building, great in the later rounds if he's available. I still have a feeling that one of these teams are gonna reach on him. I think he'll be gone I in the first so. three rounds. Third, yeah, I think like late third, yeah. A guy, a team's gonna be like, look, a team like, uh, I mean, maybe even like the Jets or something like that. Like, I can how, see how that, long, right? How yeah. long is Aaron Rodgers gonna play? Let's have yeah. him sit behind a guy who's accurate. Because look, if if you're the Buffalo accurate, Bills behind Josh Allen, why not? Yeah, seventeen games, man. What did like sixty-one quarterbacks start a game last year? That's there a you lot. Have it. Yeah, that's a lot of quarterbacks. Yeah. So my, my thinking is this: if someone's accurate, some of the times. What what is he doing when he's not? What is he doing different when he's not accurate? Is it because he's unsure? Is it because his eyes are sped up? Is it because his mechanics are wrong? Is it because he's speeding something up? What is going on here? Yeah. And uh, like I like to equate it to like the fight game, right? So I, I, I'm a Muay Thai coach. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, I do. So uh, when, when when people get wide, it's usually because they 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 lean too much into something and their punches come out wide, right? Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. I say keep it tight. And it's going to be faster going straight. It doesn't have to be faster going loop, right? So if he's throwing something and he's he's trying to get it in there a little bit too hard or his his, his hips aren't right or something, it, what's making him inaccurate? That's the job of the quarterback coach, right, yep. to make yep. sure that he lines everything up. And, look, if he's not expected to play right away anyway, Aiden O'Connell has – if you could take Aiden – what Aiden O'Connell has to put it into Milton, you have, like, an MVP, perennial MVP. The timing, mm -hmm. the touch, the accuracy, right? And I, I don't see AOC as being somebody who's going to be selfish and not want to help. You know, no, the team not around. at all. Not at all. So what better situation to bring a guy in that has accuracy issues than to work with your really accurate quarterback? Okay. I think okay. it could work. I'm not saying that we we should do it. That's like if Telesco gets outplayed, right? If he's sitting there with a pair of deuces and everyone else is like, oh, man, what yeah. am I going to do, right? And it's late in the in the draft. You're like, man, I gotta get somebody. I don't yeah. think it's a bad deal. But I mean, if I, if we miss out on the top six for whatever reason, like let's say for example, five quarterbacks go, but it could happen. Oh yeah, yeah, it can happens every year. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and uh, because I mean, we got we got what Seattle, we got we got the Rams. You know, yeah. they might be doing a little, something a little silly and just want to yeah. take somebody. Like yeah. you never know. I, I mean. Uh, the, uh, hey, bro, keep a, I, people look. Dak is on the last year of his contract, Juan. Bro, I and, know, and he's making a ton of money. And people are real, like, people are fought, like, there's so many trade talks with Dak Prescott. I live in the Dallas area right now. People are saying this is it for Dak. D don't be shocked. I know they got Lance, I know they got Trey Lance uh, on the bench, but he hasn't been proven to do anything at, at, at the next level at this point coming out of college. Like, don't be shocked if Dallas said, you know what, man, one of these guys are available. I'll go take him. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, there's so many teams that can do that. But the thing with Milton is, I think that he needs to be in a situation where there's kind of like a quarterback whisperer, like, like a Shanahan. If you went to the Niners, I, I can see Shanahan helping him and molding his skill set and, and, and helping him limit the, tur the turnovers and the, and, and the mistakes that he can make. He needs to be in a situation where 
the glaring problems, they're minimized because of the guy in, in the system. And I don't think that Luke Getzey is that guy. Salute real quick to Niles. Salute. All the media sports broadcasting are putting Penix Jr. at 13. They say we need to fill the O-line. Where are uh, where are we now? I mean, at this point now, I still have us taking the right tackle at 13. If, if, if I had to call it right now, I have us taking Fawaga at 13. Unless, and we're going to talk about something here in a second now, there's talks now, Juan, I know you've seen it today, about the New England Patriots, right? Being open for business. being They're saying, we're, we're open. Whatever you guys want to do, it, we're, we're, we're willing to open, move up, move down, so on and so forth. Their GM came out today and let it be crystal clear. They're open for business. Now, with this with this situation with Jaden Daniels, why you've been watching, right? He, he, he's been screaming to be a Raider all offseason. You don't want to be. You don't want to go to Washington. No, he doesn't. And now his agent is playing into this whole stuff on the internet, you know, about them having all the quarterbacks coming in together as a unit, you know, showing them the headquarters, you know, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much did a meeting with all those guys together, okay? So he's, you know, his agent is like, look, my guy should be treated like a king. I mean, that, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Like, why, why, why is he not here by himself getting to know so on and so forth? So he's been playing into it. And I think yeah. that there's a reason for it because I think they both understand the value of him going to the guy that helped bring him in from high school out of San Bernardino and, and go get him and bring him into Arizona State. You know, I mean, he was one of the guys that that we already know the relationship with Tony, with yeah. Tony up here, right? So, but... um. At this point, man, with New England open and the problems right now with the commanders, because what I'm hearing is that Drake May is not off the table yet. So like, like, like they are really thinking about, is it him or him? And, and then the dark horse is J.J. McCarthy. But yeah. there's a I, lot of I, talk. I, I of them either one of those happening. Me too. But there's a lot of a lot of talk of Drake May going second. With New England saying this, do you think there's a realistic shot that Antonio Pierce gets his guy? Yes. And, he, and th that was actually one of my scenarios. A couple weeks ago on the show, I did three mock drafts. I said I did a trade-up scenario, a stay-put scenario, and a trade-back scenario. In my trade-up scenario, the most realistic is kind of like what the Bills did to get Josh Allen. Okay. They were mm -hmm. like 27, then they went to like 13, then they went yep. to 7. So mm -hmm. they had to trade up and then trade up again. Yep. If we call, let's say we call like a Tennessee. Mm -hmm. First off, we got to call New England. Yeah, look. How much do you like Brissett? Like, do you yeah. like him, like him? Or it's like, can you, are you cool with them or whatever? If they're like, look, if you can bring me something cool. Okay. What if I can get you a top 10 pick and some sprinkle on the top? What do you think? Okay. Cool. Well, bring it to me. All right. Yeah. Check this out. I'm going to call Tennessee at seven. Hey, I'm going to move up six spots. I'm going to offer you boom, boom, boom to move to seven. If Jaden Daniels is not selected number two, if Jaden Daniels is available, we're going to make this happen. As soon as you do that, then I'm going to flip that seven and other stuff to get up to number three. Okay. Because from 13 to three, that's going to take a whole lot. It's yeah. going to be less going from 13 to seven and then from seven to three. Realistically, what does it cost you in your mind from 13 to three? Wow. Because think of this. New England can still get a quarterback at 13. Like They, they, they can get a bunch of extra draft capital, a bunch of future first from us. And then they can still get a Michael Penix potentially at 13 or a Bo Nix. Yeah. You know, and maybe all this hype about J.J. McCarthy, man, maybe it's all smoke while we don't know. He may be available. Well, well you know what? I don't see him passing Minnesota. But I'm just saying, like, 13 is still a very valuable spot. You know what I'm saying? It's just we, we're a, we're a player away. That defense is phenomenal. Like, like And they're going to continue to build. Christian Wilkins just took that defense to a whole oh other level. God, right? dude. You know I did saying? a video so, about him. I was watching him. He yeah, ran down, he ran a hundred hundred ran for thirty yards. So what? He ran yes, down. man. You know what I mean. And Devontae is still at the prime of his career. Jacoby is a solidified, great number two guy on the outside. And then we got Trey Tucker in limited fashion last year. Had a phenomenal year. Had that rapport with Aiden O'Connell. Uh, I think he's only going to get better. And I don't want to use him as a gimmicky guy this year. I want him to be in the slot and moving around. Like, let's get him more active. I'm actually happy you moved on from Hunter. Like, we can use another receiver. But me personally, I would probably go get – I know a lot of people like to, like to get another slot guy. I would probably want to go get another outside guy because Devontae can go into the slot. That's where his bread and butter was in Green Bay. Jacoby was a slot guy in New England. You know what I mean? So there's so much shit that we can do on the offensive side of the football to get creative. But 
I kind of lost focus of where I was going in, in terms of that. But you know what I'm saying? Like trading but, up, uh, trade yeah, back. Uh, yeah, but like, like, like in, in, a, in just in, in a nutshell, man, what do you in your head, like you think it's going to take us from go from 13 to th 13 to from three? 13 is, to three? Is it going to cost a player too? Is it potentially a Malcolm Kuntz or somebody like that? Yeah, it's, it's probably going to cost a borderline-ish starter type guy, like a Kuntz-ish mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh and uh and 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 the three ones, I would say at least. Uh that's cuz it's not all about the jump, it's about the value of the pick. Yeah. And 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 if it was like if let's say for example, it was Tennessee at 3, they don't really need a quarterback, so the value of the pick to them isn't going to be as big as it is, well we need a quarterback too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like yeah. I would I mean, I would rather pick what I want on the menu as opposed to just picking what's left over right mm -hmm. so from that sense that's why i felt like the double trade up because it's happened before oh yeah definitely and, and, and uh yeah it's gonna be a lot man three ones and a player probably yeah yeah i would say that i would it's say gonna cost more like if this year it's gonna cost us our first and our second i'm telling you right now like even least, if we don't, yeah. even if we don't tie a player to this trade potentially to move up to new england they're gonna get our first and our seconds. They have so many holes on that roster. One, like they need help. That roster is booty, and, and it's year one with 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 their new guy, right? So they're, they're gonna be patient with their new head coach. You know, what I mean, it's year one in their in in, in their you know their whole retooling. Uh, this is a whole. I'm gonna be real. It's a rebuild out there in New England. That, that roster is just devoid of any playmakers, man. And you know yeah. what? Look, I don't have a problem with trading back. The whole New England mindset of trading back, trading back. But the problem is. You get a lot of good and not a lot of great. Yeah. And 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 that's my issue with doing it so often that you pick a lot of guys that are plug in, plug in, plug in. Well, where are your stars? Yeah. You have nobody on the outside. You know, you, you have your offensive line is okay. Your yeah. defense has a couple of stars, but your best defensive player, you got on free agency. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, you have to be able to – you don't want to trade back too often. So picking up a lot of these extra picks – Especially high first, like first round, second round picks. Yeah, it could be appealing because there is a lot of holes in this roster, on yeah. the Patriots roster. And Gerard Mayo said that from the jump. He said, "You know, I know how the game goes. Like draft picks, you know, are a necessity in our situation. Like this is how you build a team. You know what I mean? So I can definitely see them moving from that three spot. Give, give me a, a, a from one to ten. The Commanders taking um, Jaden Daniels at two. Like like get, at, from one to ten. Ten being the highest." One being the lowest, what is your realistic? Do you think that they go Drake May, which a lot of, of guys, I love Drake May. I've always loved him during this whole process. I'm going to be real. I've always said this. I'm not the biggest Jaden Daniels guy. He scares the shit out of me. But if we're going to have our head coach, Antonio Pierce, be the guy moving forward, I want him to have his guy. You know what I mean? So I'm okay with moving up to go get the guy. But realistically, from one to 10, what, what, what do you think? I think he's about. I think I think Washington's about eighty percent taking Jaden Daniels. Okay. Okay. That's what I think. I okay. think. Uh, I like May too, man. He was one of my top three guys that I did my quarterback uh, uh, breakdown on, and uh, man, he just his touch, yeah, his, his arm strength. He's he's like a he's like a mini little Herbert, man. And oh, I'm telling and he's you, tough. he's tough minded. He lost a lot. He had a, a, what what uh, was it? Um, Walker. He had this yeah. last year. Yeah. No, and, and right, before right. that, he had a couple other guys. And when yeah. he had Downs and a couple Chris other guys. Walker, Josh Downs, he, they had yeah, some yeah. guys. When he had those guys in his junior year mm -hmm. or his year, year before, like, yeah, he was – that's when his name got big. Yeah. Last year, yeah. the only thing that scares me about him is he is really mobile, but he he he, he recognizes, like, the blitz a little bit late. He gets yeah. ear holed a lot. And, <laughs> and and I'm like, oh, man, uh, you, oh, that's yeah. – it makes me it makes me itchy like it makes yeah, my, my yeah. palms itch like I don't, ah, I don't know if I like that because it's like I don't like my quarterback getting hit like that yeah uh, but I mean I would be happy with Drake May I mean I, I'm be happy like I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know throw him aside for you know Spencer Pratt or anything like yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Spencer Pratt I have to eat my words but uh, you know I just think that with the style of quarterback. And the offensive coordinator that are, that are in Washington right now, mm -hmm. I think they want a Jaden Daniels type more. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that, and I was pretty much so once 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 Cliff Kingsbury went there, I thought that somehow, some way, Caleb was going to pull a. I'm not going to Chicago. 
bring me over there to Cliff Kingsbury, um, uh, familiarity, USC days, and so on and so forth. You know, the, the air raid offense. He wants a guy that can utilize his legs. And Drake can do it, but Jaden and Caleb are known for that, right? Like, they're known yeah. – Guys that can that can utilize their legs. So uh, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. But you got one more week, bro. One more week. We're gonna see what this is. Oh. But realistically, man, I'm gonna ask you because a lot of people are. We, we talked about Michael Penix Jr. What's your thoughts on him? Penix, I, yeah, I, I like him a lot, man. I yeah. like him a lot. I think that the uh, the medical is a little bit. I don't want to say overblown, but we've seen him perform when he had a capable offensive line. Mm-hmm. He was getting beat up in Indiana. Yes. You know, and and yes. and it, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, man, if you're getting beat up, like I thought, well, I don't like getting my quarterbacks hit. I don't like yeah. getting hit. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I mean, you never know. Yeah. He, had, he got a clean bill of health at the Combine. Uh, I, we haven't heard anything about him in any of the visits where anyone says anything crazy no. about his it, knee Everything, shoulder, everything is checked out. Everything checked is checked out. out. Clean, right? Great. And maybe, you know, with, you know, when he gets to the NFL, he gets a little HGH in him or something like that. Like, whatever, you know, he gets a little stronger, right? He gets maybe Deuce gets him right <laughs> with the weight room. Like, no, far be it from me, right? Hey, right, hey look, it, it happens. Hey, I'm not saying it doesn't. So, <laughs> I like him a lot. Yeah. And, and, and it, I had to really focus on something that I was taught a long time ago in business is the, 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 the absence of evidence is an evidence of absence, right? Ooh, that's a bar. So just because we haven't seen Penix work the middle of the field doesn't mean he can't. If I had those two guys on the outside, I'd be throwing it on the outside too. But in the NFL, you can't live outside the numbers. Yeah. You gotta you gotta work the middle too. That's what happened. Like what happened with Garoppolo last year? They clogged the middle up and made him throw outside, and dude, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. Yeah, it's man. hard. It's hard. They stacked to- the box on Jimmy, and it was lights out. Yeah, it's hard to live on the outsides. Yeah. So, just because he wasn't asked to doesn't mean he can't. And uh, I have. I, seen- I think he has one of the most special arms in his draft. Dude, one. I, I have no problem with it. Uh, Rory, the third win back, who doesn't really come on the show, he's like, "Oh, the lefties, this and lefties that." I'm like, listen, bro, Boomer Esiason had a right-handed backup. It's yep. not a big deal. Mark yep. Brunel had a had a right-handed backup. Hey, like, who was Joe Montana's successor? Backup, who, who, who was Joe Montana's successor? Exactly. That, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not a huge deal, man. And I I, I I like I like Michael Penix a lot. I like okay. him. Um, if we take him at 13, I'm not gonna be mad at it. Okay. I'm not gonna be mad. Okay. Because look, I can say all I want, I would have done X or I would have done Y. Ultimately, the roster is gonna be what it's gonna be. You got to mm-hmm. put the helmet on. You got to go on the field and, and play. And I think that transition from the, the the locker room to the field, I think AP has that locked down. Oh yeah, and I and yeah. I and I, th- and I, I really do think that um, with the coaching staff changes that we've had, maybe on the offensive line a little bit. Some mm-hmm. you know we got a couple of other offense like you know coordinator. I think Getzi got a little bit of a bad rap in 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 in, uh, in Chicago. I think that. He, he came in a year too late or two years too late. You know, yeah. like uh, he, yeah. he, if he would have yeah. had, you know, it's just, it's a tough situation. And, you know, you also have to take a look at the quarterback that he had too. You have to be able to like, what did I say? You have to be able to run the offense. You have to be able yeah. to see the progressions. Yeah. If yeah. you can't do that, it's going to be tough on you. And it just so happens that Justin Fields is a supreme athlete and he was make, be able to make some shit happen anyway. Well, well uh, Getty does what 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 Pierce wants. Want is is he wants to be a run first team, yeah. establish the run. I mean, you look at the Chicago those Chicago stats last year. They have, I think the second best run a rushing attack in the NFL. I know they had Justin Fields, but they had to utilize him with that because Getty didn't trust his arm. You know, you know, so they ran the football a lot, and they had. I mean, there was there was a carousel of running backs over there. At one point, they had the fullback start because these guys were in and out of the lineup hurt. You know, what I mean, so. We're going to run the football a lot. It's going to be, you know, running back by committee. It's not going to be any more workhorse. Josh Jacobs run down defense's throats. I like where we're going in terms of the offense. But I wanted to ask you this and salute to Brandon, man. I appreciate you on the five OLV Raiders Network memberships. The thing that scared me a little bit was we went from one extreme to the next, right? We brought in Cliff Kingsbury. We thought he was going to be the guy. Then he left. Went to the commanders. I guess there was one year left that, that he wanted. He wanted the three-year deal. We we offered him two apparently, and blah, 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 and he left. Right. 
We went from one extreme to the next. Cliff Kingsbury, that air raid offense, to Getsy a run first. Like, are you afraid about this whole Getsy situation? Like, like, are, are you kind of, uh, are, are you nervous? Are you excited? Like, like, what do you expect from this? Because once again, I, we, we talked about it a second ago. We don't know realistically what his offense looks like because Justin Fields wasn't his guy. And then AP brings in Cliff Kingsbury and it's just like, what are we doing, bro? Like, 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 what are we doing? Like, that was the one thing in the offseason that scared the absolute shit out of me was mm -hmm. this guy to this guy. Like, like, what are we doing? Like, we have no idea what we're doing on the offensive side of the football. Like, what, what's your take on that? Well, one thing I will say is when Kingsbury was with the Cardinals, they were right around 2,000 yards rushing a season. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was in the goal line, goal line situations, though. Yeah. And, and also yeah. Kyler Murray. So Kyler yeah. Murray, yeah. yeah. So, and that that's... That's why I felt – I think if we had Kingsbury, it would definitely be get the best mobile-ish quarterback available at 13, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, because if it's Getsy, it's a little bit different. But I still think that we were we would be able to run the ball because, uh, I mean, Connor went there and he, you know, he did well his season there. Yeah. So I just – Pro Bowl, all pro year. Yeah, he had 17 pro, touchdowns yeah, he, that year. Yeah, yeah, he did his thing over there. So mm – -hmm. Um, I just, I, I, I don't think that AP given the opportunity that he was giving, cause I don't know that anyone else was going to give him a head coaching job in the NFL. It was Raiders or nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that AP would want to hitch his, you know, his trailer on an offensive coordinator that wasn't going to play the way he wanted to play. Okay. Okay. So and, and I think that maybe that could have been a little bit of an issue too. There was that whole thing about, you know, Hugh Jackson being involved a little bit here and there. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of talk about that. So it's like, Hey man, I want to hire you. Cause I think you're smart, but we're still going to do, I mean, bottom line, I'm still the head coach. Right? Yes. Yes. So I don't know that Kingsbury really was looking for that. Okay. Um, I think he, in, in this situation, right. Is in this situation, it's a little easy. And I didn't mean to cut you off brother, but oh, good. Dan Quinn, you're the head coach. You're going to handle the defense. You're a defensive minded guy. Here's the keys, Cliff Kingsbury. You're going to have a top three pick with the quarterback. And I think Cliff Kingsbury looked at it like, okay, I'm, I'm getting – I get to mold my guy at two, and I get the keys, and I don't have to worry about anybody else worrying about how I run my offense. You know what I mean? So – No, I agree. I, yeah. So I, I I hear exactly what you're saying. Salute to George on the $5 donation. Trade up. Jaden or JJ? Stay put. Fawaga or Latham? Trade back. Arnold? I don't know if Arnold's going to be available. You know what I'm saying? At, at that oh. point. You know, one guy that may be available is my guy, Quinion Mitchell, corner out of Toledo. I think he'll be available in those in, in that 20 to 23 range. Possibly, though, Jacksonville can take him, you know, uh, before then. But um, if you trade back, you're hoping that one of those quarterbacks are there, probably a Michael Penix. Or you may even – the thing that scares me is if, if you trade back, they may reach because they got an extra second-round pick. So they may say, who's a guy that they loved – throughout this whole process of Braden Fisk, the defensive tackle out of Florida State, which I have him as a second-round grade. But if you get two second-round picks, you may say, well, I like this guy a lot, or a Byron Murphy, a defensive tackle out of Texas. I can see him going if we if we decide on trading back and no team takes him. But who would be a guy right there if we did trade back in, into the 20 range, Juan, that like maybe you would look at? you know, 20 range, I would probably go with one of the corners. Okay. Okay. Uh, just just because whoever's there or the best one available. A Kool Aid McKinstry potentially. Yeah. I mean, if he's there, um, I like uh, Quinion Mitchell. Man, his speed. Oof. Oh, Nate, Nate Wiggins, his speed. He's He'll good. be there. He's He'll a little thinner. He's a little thinner. Yeah. But again, get on it on his shirt. These guys have to just you know you just get thicker in the NFL. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I mean. <laughs> Deion Sanders said it the last year he was on NFL Network and he was asked how many teams are looking for a corner and he said everybody's looking for a corner everybody every, every team needs corners it's a pass every, league now you you never have enough corners so yeah it, it, I don't I think we can get a capable offensive lineman in the second round if we trade back but we can't get that same value at at, at, at the, on the outside on the, on defense. Yeah, and um, yeah. I, I I would love to have a guy to 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 pair up with Jack Jones 
and have Hobbs in the slot. I would love to have those two guys who just talk shit back and forth to each other. Well, yeah. watch this, watch this. And I don't know if you heard uh, Ter- Terry Arnold's um, interview. Yes. On the Sirius XM. Yes. That dude sounds like he's oh, coming right from the Al Davis playbook. Yeah. He sounds yep. confident, not cocky. Yep. He mm-hmm. tells you why he's good. Yeah. Oh, I did this. I did the homework on this receiver. I know that I need to watch his break at the five yard mark and the 12 yard mark. If yep. not, he's going deep. So I know yep. what to look for. I need this. So he was talking, oh. he was breaking it down. And I, I have no issues at all because, look, we don't have a lot of needs on this team, but the needs that we do have are pretty They're big. Glaring. Yeah. 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 So um, I think secondarily, I would like to have another running back. I'd like to have another receiver. Um, uh, Maybe someone else in the secondary, right? I, I, I just, I, I love secondary. I love, I, I love me a, just a shit talking, ball hawking secondary. That is just, just. I mean, what, what did AP say about, about who would you not want to date your daughter? Anyone in the secondary? Yeah. Nobody, none of the guys in the secondary group. Yeah. I want dating my daughter, and that's how I want it. <laughs> that's how I want it. Because those dudes are out in islands sometimes with like guys that are a lot bigger. Yeah, sometimes a lot faster than them, and all the rules are going against them. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to ask you about the secondary right now because you know a lot of people are worried. Me personally, I would go the middle rounds to get a corner. I trust Jack Jones. I think that he's going to be that guy. So I, I don't know if you listened to the show a few weeks back. Salute to my brother um, L Fingers. He was in a studio with Jack Jones. He came over. People don't know that Jack Jones raps. He doesn't want people to know. He's actually really good at it. It's it's, it's crazy. He's it's it's, it's an upgrade from it's an upgrade from Darren Waller. I'll tell you that why. But bro. I promise, but bro. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna send you this song because I have it. Nobody else heard it, but I send it to okay, you after okay, the song. Okay, okay. But so he they're in the studio, right? And AP's FaceTiming him. He's like, "Yo, what's up? What 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 are you doing?" And Jack's like, "Coach, I'm in the studio." That's what I thought she was. I'm just checking in, making sure. And he hung up the phone and he told Fingers, he said, my coach, man, that's my guy. He always checks in on me, making sure like he's locked in with his guys because he put his he put his ass on the line to go get a Jack Jones. You know what I mean? Like like he, he'll he go to bat for his guys. I want to ask you, in year two with Jack Jones on a rookie deal, like what do you truly expect from him? Because I, for one, think that he could be a guy that can be your corner one. You know what I mean? He was in a situation in New England where a lot of players hate playing there, Juan. It's not even just the, 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 the way the organization is ran. It's the fan base, you know, the, the, the racial stuff that goes on in Boston. It's I'll been known to say that. It's been known forever, right? And he's finally in a place where he feels like he belongs there. You know what I'm saying? And I think he could be that guy. Me personally, I wouldn't get a corner unless one of them great, like top guys fall to the second round, which could happen. But I would get one in the middle rounds because I believe in Jack Jones. And I want to see what Jacorian can do in year two. Like, like it, it got into his psyche early, Juan, because there was some bad calls on him. Like some 15-yard penalties really early on in the season. And it broke Sorry, him. Sorry, man. The, 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 can, you hear the, can you hear the siren? Oh, that's good. It's good. I live in the hood, bro. I live in the hood of Long Beach, bro. What's I up? love it, bro. I love it, bro. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I love it. But, but what's your take on this secondary right now? If we don't go get one in the first round, like what do you feel about the Jack Jones, Nate Hobbs, um, Jacory and Bennett trio at this point with Brandon Faison and you know a few other guys on the roster? How do you feel right now? If we didn't go corner early, I'm okay. I'm a, I'm I'm not super pumped about it, but I agree with you on Jack Jones. I mm-hmm. agree with you that a, a lot of people are like, "Yo, man, Jack Jones, he had that issue." Like, look, he didn't know. He says that he couldn't have a gun just in his bag. He had to be in a gun bag and you yeah. couldn't have the clip inside the gun. It's like, yeah. okay, I get it. It's a mistake. Not a lot of people, I mean, people that don't travel know that. Right. Mm-hmm. So I get that. I get that issue. Okay. And that was, that was that happened early when he just got there to new England and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. A buddy of mine is a big bills fan. And he's sending me all this stuff about, Oh man, he's, he's drinking on like, he's on vacation, bro. Yeah. A man can't have a Don Julio on vacation, bro. I loved it. I loved every second What's of that shit. It? I mean, if he was in a strip club doing it, okay, all right. Maybe we could talk. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go live at a strip. But he's on vacation on a balcony somewhere drinking. Like, yeah, man, let him let him, let him do his thing. Let him have fun. Let him have fun, man. He's, yeah, he's doing it responsibly, whatever. Cool. Yeah. I, I would be 
I wouldn't be as concerned as I was last year without Jack Jones, but it still would be an area of concern of mine if we didn't add somebody in the secondary. Okay. I mean, well, I, we need to, we, I think we need to add two guys. See, my my, my, my perfect off season would be to, to bring in a Steph, a, you know, a Gilmore right now or bring in a Xavier Howard, right? Or a Dory Jackson, one of these veteran corners, bring him in. So it's set, it's not such a dire need to bring in a corner in the first two rounds. Cause then you can go attack a Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon or, or a Cam Hart that I'm a big Ooh, fan of. That dude is like six, four, dude. Bro, they both are him and Kyrie. Like, and, and Patrick Graham wants those big, he wants a big body guy. You know what I'm saying? Like go get a, go get a big body corner. I, I'm okay with that. But like, I trust what we have going on. Yes, that room is thin a little bit right now. Yeah, you know, Amik left and, you know, we lost – Um, who else did we lose? I think we lost Tyler to the Philadelphia Eagles, Tyler, another guy uh-huh. that could play in the slot for us that played really well for us. You know what I mean? But I'm not really too much worried, especially with the with the upgrades at the defensive line. You know why. You know the game, right? If, if you get to the quarterback, you make the second, the second level and third level of your defense that much better. You know what I mean? So – there's not going to be so much pressure on these corners this upcoming season when you got a Christian Wilkins. We have finally somebody that can add that interior presence and command double and triple teams from the interior that's going to free up Max and Malcolm Coots and Tyree on the outside. Bro, I I did like on, on that cut up of, of Christian Wilkins from last year. He beat the center yes. on a shotgun snap before it got <laughs> to, to Bryce Young's hands. Yeah, he had already beat the center before the ball got to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. That that's insane. Get off, insane. Get off at three hundred and plus pounds, right? Crazy. But look, Spillane's going to be a lot better. He's going to have a lot less mud on his feet when yeah. you have those, those. Everyone's double teaming up front. He's going to have a lot less, a lot less to, to to shift through. You have the. Not going to have a boot on his hand either. Oh yeah, yeah, he's good to go with that. You yeah. know that thick ass neck he's got. He got that thick old neck. <laughs> he has thick neck. Look like a boy. Back. Yeah, straight up. You look like one of the Mario bullets that come out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I was yeah. thinking. And then, and then you know, Diablo's gonna be able to fly a little bit more. He's he's, he's fast. He'll be able to you know just get to the ball carry a little bit more. Have have a little bit. Don't have as much to do. Just see it, get it right. Yeah. See ball, yeah. tackle ball, mm-hmm. and it, it's gonna make a huge difference. I think that the core that we have here is good. What I'm looking at, too, is we always need to add that one little piece on whatever level of the defense, but just to kind of push it out a little bit further to, to make make us have that group a little bit longer. Because then when XYZ guy gets a little bit older, we have that other guy that's still there and we kind of it's an easier transition. Yeah, that's why I mean, I, I don't I'm, I'm all for taking two guys in the secondary. Yeah, And a lot of the safeties that we have in the draft right now are combos. Like, because with the, what's going on with, with, with college football right now is a lot of these safeties have to cover the slot. Yeah. A lot of these safeties have to come down and cover cover receivers. So mm-hmm. they're used to doing that. And that's why they're a little bit lighter, right? At yeah. times. But I mean, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with them being able to play multiple positions because ultimately that's what Patrick Graham wants. Versatility. He wants, he wants to flip, you know, he wants to be able to flip a guy and, yeah. uh, you know, confuse the defense and rotate af- after the snap. And yeah. the quarterback has no idea what the hell's going on. So I agree. I like that, and and that's why I'm 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 very I'm intrigued by this draft. It's very top heavy. It just so happens there's a lot of good players in positions of need for us a little bit further in the draft. Yeah, like like in a uh, in a uh, Dane, Dane Brugler's uh, mock, he had us taking Braylon Allen in the fourth round. Braylon mm-hmm. Allen is two thirty five four six three four, six two six three guy huge. Yeah, bro, look. If, if, if Zeus is your lightning from the thunder and lightning, you have a huge, huge problem in the backfield for every defense out there. Yeah. So, bro, Bray, Braylon, his comp is kind of like a Jonathan Taylor. He's big, bro. Yeah. He's yeah. big and, and he can he can break tackles. You know, it's a Wisconsin running back. What do you expect? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and, and Jamari Thrash, like just, just the name itself, right? Do we do? Yeah. Yeah. I see him. Mm-hmm. I see him almost like. A, a thinner version of Devonte Adams Ooh. coming out because that route running, that yeah. route running that he has, he can get open. His hands aren't the strongest. His body's not the strongest. But what do we talk about? You know, hey, Sandra, you get the NFL, <laughs> you get whatever, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm about to, look, stop me when I start lying. Okay. <laughs> so he gets in there, gets a little stronger, and and who better to learn 
the nuances of running routes when you already run good routes than Devonte Adams. Exactly. You get you just that little bit extra, that little bit yeah. extra on the end. Yeah. And I mean, take advantage of while we have them, have them yeah. teach the young guys. I love that. Salute to everybody here in the building. Real quick, you guys. If you guys can, man, wipe them feet, hit them thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. Also, subscribe to my brother, man, the Autumn Wind Bags. I see my brother, uh, the, the my father, put the link in the comment section, you guys. Appreciate I see a few it, man. people already said that they already subscribed. Make sure you subscribe. Also, salute to Casey. Let's get these supers in real quick. What about Slovis as a late round guy? I'm going to be real. I, don't, I'm, I, I like to stay away from these BYU guys. Last year, I mean, he has the measurables, 215, 6'3", you know, but 17, uh, 1,700 yards in the air last year, 12 TD, 6 picks, a QBR of 52.9. Casey, I'm cool. I don't want a developmental guy. Like, if we're going to get a guy in the later rounds, get someone like a Jordan Travis because of the injury. Let him get healthy. He has all the athleticism in the world to potentially be that number one guy. If you're going to take anyone that late, get somebody that can be the guy. And I don't think that – uh that, that Slovis could be the guy. Salute to Casey. Go ahead, brother. I'm I'm an SC fan, right? I go to all the SC games. Keaton Slovis started at SC. Uh huh. Yeah. And and, right. and he was good, but there was just something not there, and and that's the reason why we moved on and ended up getting Kalen Williams in. But what I'm worried about with someone like Keaton Slovis is he's the, he's very similar to who we already have in the building. And there you and, have and, it. and by all this talk, right? You're saying that you need more than what you have in the building. Yeah. So why are you going to bring what you have in the building again when you're saying that that's what, you need more than that, right? You bring you somebody know. else in with, with a different skill set, period. Exactly. That yeah. the, the the Jordan Travis I love, if it wasn't for the injury, he would have won the last game. He probably maybe would have gone into the playoffs yeah. Uh, yeah. because of you know him winning, that, winning those last two games. But what I like about him is not a bad word said about the kid. Mm -mm. Everyone loves him leadership goes out there he's a little erratic when he needs to put a little bit of more mustard on the ball but he's going to learn that you don't always have to do that right yeah, yeah. And, and especially when he's as mobile as he is he is almost like my Jaden Daniels light okay he's a little bit smaller doesn't like have that. quite the arm strength but still super mobile his teammates love him yeah and and and, and he won a lot in in, in in a lot of big games too so and he has some talent on that offensive side of the bro. ball Keon Coleman and and Giant Bell and you know, what I mean, they had some weapons, weapons, you know, what I mean, Benson. But um, I, I'm just saying if we're going to go a guy later in the round, like later, if somebody doesn't take him in the first three or four rounds, if we're going to get a guy later in the round. Get somebody with some dynamic like, you know, what I mean, like I just want to see some some, juice, different. Man, some pop. Some there, right? you, there you have it, man. Salute to Silver and back. Give me day two surprise. Best uh, best available stud pick and day three pick who becomes an instant Raider Nation favorite year one, i.e. Max Hobbs Renfro. So. I'll, I'll say this, and, and I've, I've been saying the same names over and over because I have my favorites, okay? okay. Um, Cam Hart is one of them. You know, he, he'll be a I day two. He'll be a day two guy, Notre Dame guy. Him and Kyrie Jackson are my guys. Um, Ray Davis, the running back out of Kentucky, is my favorite running back in this draft. I think he can be phenomenal, you know, and, and I think he'll be available there in that fourth, fifth round. There's going to be a run on running backs, but I think one team is going to be smart enough to say, I like Ray Davis. Let me, let me let me go get him. So those would be my guys. And then um uh um who else? I like the young uh, uh edge rusher Muhammad out of uh, Colorado State. Yeah. Um he could be a dog in the later rounds. You know what I mean? So there, there's a shit ton of talent, you know, that, that you can look at. Maybe even, you know, you're in the LA area, uh Gabriel Murphy, you UCLA. Yeah, UCLA. Edge rusher, you know what I mean? So he 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 could play inside and outside, and he's he's a tough kid, man. He was a tough out. When yeah. they beat us last year, he was unblockable, dude. Every, we were a lot to had all the attention that and, and, and Mer, oh, dude, he he was all over the place. Another rate, a late round guy because we use a, a, another receiver, right? What about your boy Taj Washington? Not bad. I would rather have a Rice maybe a, a round or two earlier, yeah, because he's a lot bigger and yeah. just yeah. as fast. Yeah, uh, no, definitely, but definitely. Taj Washington is is. He, he didn't run a, a very uh, robust route tree, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, at SC. A yeah. lot, 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 lot of hitches, a lot of stops, uh, screens, and, and, and go routes. What, what, what do you think about your boy uh, uh, Lloyd, man? What, what do you think? Where do you think he's going to go in this draft? And what do, you see the, what do you see the trajectory in his career? Like, do you see him being a number one somewhere? I, I think he can be. Because a number one now, what are you like? 
17 carries a game, something like that, if you're the number yeah, one. Yeah, 17 guy. to 20 range. Because yeah, a lot yeah. of – it's kind of a running back by a committee, one-two punch yeah. and it, with everyone now. So, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I like him a lot. I think when he came in, he – he popped. He has that 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 jump, that that little bit of boost factor to him, yeah. and it's and it's a, like a joystick stop and start type of thing where he can get in there and he can get to the hole and wiggle through. Yeah. Uh, so what? With the, day two, right? I, I, let me see. Day two. Um, I really like. I, I saw some tape on this kid and I looked at it more, and he's nasty. Cooper BB from <laughs> Kansas State. Kansas State, baby. That dude is nasty. Dude. Yes. Yes. Uh, I know we got white hair and he was, you know, pro former Pro Bowl player and everything. But oh, Zach Zinter too. Juan out of Michigan. Zach Zinter too. Late, late, a little bit later. Yeah, probably because Zach Zinter. Too. Dude, Cooper BB. Oh my God, dude. That dude is a Mama. beast. Yeah. A beast. So a little bit later, uh, you already took Davis. Uh Frank Gore Jr. Okay, yeah. Frank Gore Jr. Uh mm -hmm. he didn't do anything but mess around and be like the best running back at the senior bowl. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh so i mean he's a little undersized not quite as big but same mentality of his dad yeah uh and you know every he was well respected yeah so um i don't see that being a bad pick who else do i got here like a marcellus dial right okay. like, uh the, the cor cornerback uh, uh, uh south carolina i, I like, like me so, i like me long long aggressive corners i like yeah. those long arm aggressive corners right okay uh you know those are a couple of guys you know i, I like that uh, I, I like Marcel's dial a lot, man. I like him. There's a uh, but Katan Oladapo, uh, bigger safety from Oregon State. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw him play a lot, and he may be one of those hybrid linebacker type guys. He's like 6'3, mm -hmm. two, two, 220 ish. If he gains me 5'10 pounds, which you know, he could do it, right? He has that deal like Omar Spites, uh, the uh, LSU linebacker that, that I like a lot in those later rounds too. So I, I see where you're going. I see where you're going right I here. like athletic, long-armed, ball yeah. skill having guys on my second and third levels. I like that. Another um, guy, Frank, Frank Crum as well. We talked about him a lot. The, the, the right tackle out of Wyoming. Keep an eye on him in those later rounds as well. Salute to Spivey, man. My guy, appreciate you as always, my brother. This is the Kevin Nash of Shield Moore. Salute to our guy. Appreciate you. Salute to all the new members in the building. Salute to Silverback. Thoughts on Jav uh, Javon Baker to grow under DA. This is another guy that is starting to gain a lot of steam. Um, you know, um, played in Florida. You know what I mean? Uh, Central. I believe it's Central Florida. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, he, he, I'm going to tell you right now, that guy had a lot – of people talking about him at the combine. Me and Stu was kicking back, and there was a lot of talk about Javon Baker. But that's just not a need. Back, like I think he'll be gone in those first three rounds. I think a wide receiver a needy team is going to take. Mind you, Tom Telesco likes to get those wide receivers in those mid rounds. He's done it. You know the the Palmers of the world. He's done it a lot in the past. But um, I don't see us looking at wide receivers in need. And I think by the time we do go look. Baker would be off the board. I think he's going to be kind of in that 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 Brendan Rice, yeah. Um, you know, like that kind of back to back to back wide receiver run. I think he'll be in that second wave of wide receiver run. So I don't think we're going to get a chance uh, with with him at this point. But I, I love I love Baker. I think that he could be a sneaky sneaky receiver in this year's draft, man. Um, salute to Assassin BB and Zinter. Bro, that would be phenomenal, dog. That would be phenomenal because BB Dude, is that BB guy. Is oh my god, bro! I yeah. saw him. And this dude just pulling and making blocks on secondary, like 15, 20, 30 yards down the field. Yeah. He doesn't stop. And he's able to pluck these guys off. It's not like these guys are like just like juking them out. Like, nah, -uh. yeah. I got two of my sights and you're yeah. going straight out of bounds. Like, Bro, if it wasn't for Grant, if it wasn't for Graham Barton out of Duke, and he plays a, a multiple positions on the O-line, I would probably say Cooper Beebe is the best guard in this year's and then Christian Haynes out of Con uh, Connecticut, too. Connecticut, yeah, he's good. Yeah, but yes. Cooper Beebe, bro, he fits. Like, I, I, I've been saying this since day one. Why? Like, if we go Fuaga in the first round, right tackle, and we get Beebe in the second, I, I wouldn't be mad. I know it's not the sexiest, but it's like, dog, your, your, your offensive line is set up for the future. Hey, man, if you a girl, you go to a bar, you're going to get hit on. There's so no matter what you look like, somebody's gonna like you. So yeah. sexy is in the eye of the beer holder, man. <laughs> I would take that for sure. Because look, I want. I want mean, nasty, and a little bit fucked up in the head. Yeah. That's what I want yeah. on, my, on both sides of the line. Yeah. Uh, that's what I want. And Fuaga and BB on that line. Oh, my God, bro. 
Nasty. Salute to, and fuck you, one of the greatest names in YouTube history. I want Iguodala. <laughs> or Iguodala? Are we talking about Andre? What, 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 what are we doing here? Salute to, salute to fuck you, the greatest name in YouTube history. Wipe the feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. Once again, you guys, make sure you guys subscribe to my brother over at the Autumn Windbags. They put on great, great, great content. Make sure you support one of our own. I told people, I said this week, we're doing the Avengers thing. We're getting all the greatest Raider content creators together, and we're going we're gonna to talk to the nation, man. So, you know, we, we had to bring on my guy, man, Juan, you know, my, my you know, Soto Medico here and talk that shit, man. Let's get some questions in, you guys, before we get out of here. We're an hour in. You got a few more minutes, brother? Yeah, but I got what you need, man. I, okay. I, I, I emptied my whole night for you. Let's go. Let's go. Jason says this. Salute to my, salute to my, oh, salute to East Coast Gridiron in the building, too, my dog. He said Clovis is terrible. <laughs> Slovis. Slovis is terrible. <laughs> Salute to my guy, man. Let me see. Would you guys use Tyree in a package to move up to get a quarterback? Yes. I mean, if we had to, <laughs> yes. 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 But the thing is this. He's on a rookie deal. Malcolm Kuntz is going to get paid a shit ton of money. You'd rather have the guy develop in year two and, and move on from Malcolm Kuntz, which it would hurt me because I'm a huge Malcolm Kuntz. I've, I've been a fan of him since Buffalo. I was screaming for us to draft him. I would not want to see him move on. But if Tyree, if it was asked for, I would definitely do it. Because then you free up some, you know, fuck it, pay Malcolm Coons. But Christian Wilkins, Max, Max Crosby getting paid that kind of money on that D-line. And then you got to pay Malcolm Coons because he can have, bro, he had eight, what, eight sacks last year in limited fashion. If he puts up 10 to 15 sacks this year, somebody's going to pay him a shit ton of money in free agency. Yeah, eight sacks and nine starts. <laughs> bro, it, it, it's only, and he's been a guy that can get to the quarterback. It's never been a problem. The problem with him was setting the edge. You know what I mean? Like, like, and he's even gotten better against the run. So, you know, I would love to keep Malcolm Coons. And, and if, if Tyree was a, a, a guy that a team was screaming for, we want him. Oh, yeah, move on. I'm cool. But oh, look, if, if, if someone says, I want three first round picks for pick number three, right? Okay, mm -hmm. well, last year's is one, Tyree, right? There's one. You can have him if you want him. And yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with it because you know first round pick is first round pick. You yeah. still have to you know you have to make sure that you uh, you uh, backfill that position anyway. Yeah. As far as Razor Ramon, interestingly enough, one of my cats. I got two cats. I, I, my chick has a, has the dog, but like I got two cats, and one of them is named Razor Ramon. <laughs> Ayo, I love it. Ayo, oh yeah, man, chico. Rest in yeah, paradise. I, I got I got him the week after Razor Ramon died, Scott Hall. And I thought, oh. I'm name you Razor Ramon player. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time, man. Salute to East Coast. He says, Slovis is buns. He's going to be a Marvel Comics villain in his future. And, and, and my guy, East Coast, breaks down film all day, every day. He's not but, great, dude. Yeah. He, he, Look, he had that, that really solid uh, freshman year. When he was forced into to, in, 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 into service, his sophomore year didn't start off great. I don't think he even finished the season yeah. uh, as a starter that year at SC, and then he was gone. Yeah. Well, hey, like, like I said, man, you know, if we're gonna go later, in which I mean, can you really afford to go later though? Like, why if, if no. you got Aiden and in, in, in Gardner Minshew on your roster as the guys and Anthony Brown, like, you got to go earlier than that, bro. Like if you end up with a with, with a Slovis, we we failed miserably in this draft. Yes, I agree hundred percent. Let's say for example, okay, let's let's break it down. Okay, who do we have? The top three guys take quarterbacks, right? Someone yeah. like like a, a a Minnesota trades up to number four or whatever. Mm -hmm. So which four, I see right? Mm -hmm. And then and then uh, uh, the Broncos fuck around and take a quarterback. Go to eight, seven, gone. eight, somewhere around that range. Right? Get okay. JJ or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's one quarterback left, and we're like, you know what? I just don't feel like we need to take take him right now. We have. We like these guys a lot better. We think that the guy is big, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and take, you know, whoever. X player, right? Mm -hmm. We take Rattler at 44. Okay, look, does he have some things he needs to work on? Yeah. Yes. Even he's played a lot of snaps, and he still makes the same mistakes, which yes. does scare me. But when you have the same system and you learn under the same guy, yeah, and, and you're getting that type of level of coaching now, I like him, even if we have to reach up a, maybe a round too early, because we don't want to leave with a bum. Yeah. And I have to say, every quarterback coming into the draft has things to work on. Yes. You watch Caleb Williams. You're a USC guy. 
dynamic. I think that he's a clear cut number one guy. There's some deficiencies in his game that, that, that he needs to get right. You know what I mean? Like Jaden Daniels, I hate the way that he just runs into contact. With that frame, you're going to get destroyed wow. in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we talked about Drake May sometimes being erratic and, and decision making here and there. And then, you know, JJ McCarthy's a huge question mark to me because Harbaugh protected him, run game, defense, you know, like, like, and, and didn't really make him go out there and win a lot of football games. Hand the football off, defense is going to play his job and do his job. All you got to do is out there is, is, is a game manager. JJ's a huge question mark. He could be phenomenal, but I just don't know. Bo Nix is another guy that played his position very well within that system that they asked him short dink and dunk short dink and dunk yeah he did it a quick. at a high level one like so i don't understand the hate because people don't realize we don't know what he's going to be in the next system like i'll tell you right now i've said this a million times if sean payton gets his hand on hands on bonix i'm gonna be very i'm gonna be very afraid because i think that he will be the guy to say we know your strengths and I, and mind you i think sean payton is very overrated I don't think he's the guy that, but I think that he can, he can help mold Bo Nixon to being one of those guys. And, and all these guys have problems though. They all have yeah, problems. No, they do. You know, Michael Penix, you know, outside of the injuries, there, there's some, there's some, pro, sometimes I question his release. I, I don't know if you see it, but like sometimes on, on deep throws, it really scares the shit out of me, bro. Like he goes all the way Dude. back. Like, but he's down there on the ground when he throws he the football. Like, he looks like a 1920s pitcher when they pick a lead. Yes. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. going on, bro? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, J.J. McCarthy is like a very polarizing quarterback right now because there's a lot of like slide where he's going to end up, right? Yeah. And like I said earlier, the absence of evidence is an evidence of absence. If he Maybe he just wasn't asked to do that. But when he was let – when he was asked to do a little bit more because – Maybe the opponent wasn't great. He threw three picks against Bowling Green. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's got... like, yo, man, maybe there's a reason why he wasn't allowed to do what he wanted to do. Is that a, he's only 21 years old? Maybe it's a maturity thing. Yeah. Is it just, you know, I don't know. He's practicing against that defense every day. That defense in Michigan was legit. Yeah. So I think that any rookie out there, it comes down to, continuity and, and 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 scheme fit for especially with a quarterback if you get like we talked about if you get the right quarterback in the right system for us like a Penix, like yeah man that that's that's a raider quarterback you, yeah. you you play hard defense you run the ball and you take deep shots okay cool yeah. i like yeah. it let's mm -hmm. do it well if, if you get like you said jj or even a, a bo nix are uh, with with the broncos which i mean uh peyton had his, his best success with breeze who was what a timing Short pass guy, but he took shots where he needed to, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I can see that work too. The thing we need to do is we need to not lay back after we get the quarterback that we want and be mm -hmm. all right, cool, man. He's going to win the games for us. No, we need to make sure that we get those Cooper BBs and those or those Max Meltons or those guys later on to and, and bring them in. But the one thing that I'm really positive on, and I'm really pumped about is the feel of the locker room, the feel of the coaching staff, how yeah. everybody seems to be super locked in. And there's no question of how you should act when you walk into that locker yep. room. Yep. There's yep. no divide. There's no like this side and that side. That that, yep. that doesn't that, – no. Everyone's on the same page, pulling the same mm -hmm. side of the rope. And yep. when you have that happening, good things happen. Yeah. I love it, man. Salute to everybody here in the building. Almost 900 people still rocking with us after an hour in. Whether you're watching on Twitter, you're watching on YouTube, man, you guys make sure you hit them thumbs up, wipe them feet, hit that subscribe button. Once again, subscribe to the Autumn Wind Bags on YouTube. Salute to Silverback. Check out Dwight McLaughlin, cornerback, Arkansas, long corner in the late, very late round. Salute to my guy. You just gave me some homework to do, my brother. And speaking of late rounds, are you comfortable real quick, man? Because the, the chat is asking for it. I'm going to give you a mock draft on the way out. You cool with okay. that? This sure. is your mock. I'm not going to help. I'm not going to. I won't take any rounds. It's just all you. I know okay. you, bro. Like, I know you. You know football. Like, okay, let's see. we'll see. Let's see what we got. No, no, because one thing, the, the, this is the thing. I, I love bringing on people that love this game the way I love this game. And there's a reason why I love this. This is my Raider brother anyway. You know what I mean? But the takes that he puts on Twitter, the takes that they put on their podcast, they put on great, great content. So I, I trust my brother 
to be able to handle a mock and do his thing. So I'm going to give you this mock. We're going to do a seven round. Um, and, and, and you take whatever position you want. We're going to do it like this real quick. Let me bring it up. Mock draft simulator. We're a week away. So, you know, it's, it, it, we, we got to have some fun with this. Might as well have some, have a good time with it. Yes. No trades. So we're not going to do any trades. You'll be my conciliary, right? Like if I need to ask a little bit of advice, you can kick me oh. down some advice, right? Come on. I got you, brother. All right. All right. You. All right. We're Let's good, do it. Good. Let's do it. All right. Boom. Mock draft. No trades. No trades. Okay. Uh, for I got turn. Oof. I would. It's so, hard for me to go Dallas Turner. It's hard for me not to take him. I know, right? It's hard, bro. It, I, I I think he goes to Atlanta. And I don't think there's any way he he's here. But um, if, if we're playing the board, we're given. We are. We are. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see what Atlanta took. Oh, so they took edge rusher. Yeah, they took so, edge rusher too. This is very realistic because, bro, they're the only team that needs an edge rusher in the top ten. So Dallas Turner, the probably potentially top edge rusher, is on the board right here. Yeah, man, I would have. I would probably have to take take Turner if he's there at at thirteen. Okay. Uh, the let's look the at Ravens, the Ravens take uh, an edge rusher every single year. Yes. What's wrong with having great and deep? What's wrong with that? What's wrong? What's wrong with making your strength even stronger? Uh, hey, bro. To be real with you, I'll read that super in a second. I got you, brother. I promise you, I'm not. I'm not firing past it. Salute to HVAC. This is fire, man. I'm a little late to the party, but these are the two top Raider YouTube channels in the oh, game. Oh, player. Salute to my guy, man, HVAC Raider. I appreciate you on the $5 donation, brother. And thank you so much for the kind words, even more. And salute to OCSIC. Dope collaboration, guys. Do it more often. You know what, brother? I promise you moving forward, we're definitely going to do this more often. I'm, I, I ain't mad at you, bro. To be real with you, if, if you have one of the top edge rushers on the board there, we can definitely use a right tackle. But I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Take Look, do your thing. This is your mock draft. So... Because at this point, all right, all right. Okay, hold on. Let me ask you this. I gotta play devil's advocate. Okay. If you take Dallas Turner here, right? What does that mean for Malcolm Coombs? What does that mean for Tyree Wilson? Like, because at this point, you just drafted an edge rusher in the top 10 last year that you kind of moved around last year and you've kind of found you know some his footing at, you know at the defense tackle position, but they're gonna move him back to the edge. He'll he'll kick around because realistically, why you put you put him there in the middle of that defense during running downs, it's gonna be ugly. It's going to be ugly. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't see him being a full-time defensive tackle. Malcolm Kuntz, on the other hand, this is the last year of his deal, and I have him being the starter on the outside. So if you bring in Dallas Turner, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of uh, a competition there. And, and Big Tone, I'm not trying to sway him away. I'm just giving him the positives and the negatives, brother, the pros and the cons. Because, mind you, I think that Dallas Turner is probably the best edge rusher in his draft. But he has he has an intact neck too. You know what? Hey man, everybody tell me everybody's telling me to shut the fuck up. So look, it's on you. What do you want to do, brother? What do you want to do? Okay, I like Dallas Turner a lot. I think I'm gonna probably end up living to regret not taking him. Okay. Uh, but um, I would probably go with uh, I will probably go with 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 Quinion Mitchell. Oh, okay. Right. So you're gonna take a corner right here. Yeah, look, the, okay. it's a passing league. There, we, we we can still get some some uh, some value in the second round. Okay, I like that. I like that. So, and that's Penix. my favorite, that's my favorite corner in this draft. So, Penix. Yeah. So we got our quarterback. Boom, easy peasy. First two rounds, future corner one, potentially a uh, future quarterback one right there. We're gonna reject all this. Damn, Peyton Wilson's still on the board too. That's oof, crazy. Oof, oof, oof. Uh, Realistically, the third round, what what would you attack? Because we still haven't got a tackle, we haven't gotten a guard. Uh, Peyton yeah. Wilson is, is like a consolation prize at this point. He's phenomenal, but we need some O line help as well. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to pass up on Wilson because yeah, no, bro, you, that dude is just he's like the closest thing to Luke Keekley. Yes, I've I've seen on tape. If he could stay healthy, dog, yeah, he could, he that's, could a, do that that's a big if though. Uh, what do we got a little bit further down? Okay. So is there a specific position you want to look at tackle? At offensive line. Okay. So what we I got think, there. I mean I think the best offensive lineman left is Rosen Garden out of Washington. Mm -hmm. Blake Fisher's still there too. That's one of my 
Yeah, God. I like Blake Fisher. Dude, Blake Fisher, the best tackle in the draft was on opposite side. Mm-hmm. The pass rushers are not going against Joe Alt. They're yes. going against Blake Fisher, and Blake Fisher oh. held his own. Yes. Blake Fisher held his own. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and wait on Blake Fisher, though. Let me go ahead and see okay. all here real quick. Okay. Um, We'll go down a little bit. Yeah, let's see what we got. Trotter's still there too, even though I think Peyton Wilson's the better. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be Peyton Wilson, man. I, okay. I can't pass up that talent, dude. I can't pass up that. I talent. love it. I think that's a phenomenal pick. I did it the first round. Not a, not a super position of Ooh. need. Uh, Braylon Allen's still there too, but uh, you, you may have to look at your tackle here, though. Yeah, was, what what we got tackle wise? Rash is there too. Um, let me see. We just missed out on our guy. Damn. That's all right. There's a couple guys a little bit later that we can go for. Yeah, look at guards real quick. Um, Lane Robbins is the last one. Zach Center's still there. He'll probably be available in the next round. So next round, okay. All right. Yeah, Braylon Allen. Now remember, you know, they got uh Tavandre Sweat there, which he'll probably drop because of the DUI. Yeah, you know, he'll be a true nose at the next level, you know what I'm saying? But at this Is point, that a huge need after you spent all that money on Wilkins, and you got John you got Jenkins Jank coming and back. Butler still coming back, and you got McCall, bro. People tend to forget we got the young twenty-four year old out of uh, from that we got from Carolina, yeah. the, the former Kentucky guy, man. That we we could we could see what he is, you know what I mean? So, um, scroll down a little bit, see what okay. we got there on there. Okay, let's see. Oh shit, turn on Hoppers. There's two still. Mm-hmm. Another linebacker, but we, we yeah, remember right. we just took a linebacker. Tyree Jackson. Your boy Thrash is there, and we're in the fourth round. I know, bro. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go with a Braylon Allen. I love it. I love it. So we're we're gonna be a run heavy team, yeah, bro. Braylon Allen, Zeus, and Madison could be the best, like three guys, like three headed monster in the league. Like real talk. All right, so we got our running back, we got our linebacker, we got our corner, we what got our offensive line wise going on right now. Yeah, we have no linemen right here. So, Mac Gonzalez, or uh, yeah, well, no, Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez. yeah I, like, I like Gonzalez and Zinter. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do Zinter. I like that. I like that. I love it. That's one of my. And then we're, we got back to. I think we got back to. No, this we don't have back to back yet. That's the next round. Let me see. Um. Okay, best players on the board, right here. Uh, there's still a tackle there too. I, I like Siona Vaki, the safety out of Utah. Um, we haven't gotten a tackle yet. I think Frank Crum is still there. Day, Drake uh, Nugent, the center out of Michigan, is still available. Let me see. Didn't get an edge rusher yet. Um, Sandiata Anderson is still there out of Grambling State. He's a sneaky late round guy. Uh, Nathan Thomas, tackle out of Louisiana. That's another sneaky name in this year's draft. Is there a specific position you want to look at in terms of this six round pick? I, I want I want to look at playmaking ability here. Okay, so look you're looking at, at all what we got going on here. Okay, we can look at all and see what we got going on here. Okay, uh, here, uh, we got another guard, Dylan Mc, uh, McMahon, out of NC State. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with Vaki. I, I, love I, it. I, I, I'm, I, I really like uh, Utah, the Utah secondary, man. I love it. Phenomenal pick. Okay, we're right back on the board here. I want to do something real quick. I just want to see what – not too many tackles left at this point. Oh, Caden Wallace is there, though, but I think that he may be – they may move him to guard. I, I don't know. Um, let's go back to all what, – what do we have right now? So what, what do we really need? We have a guard – we didn't get a tackle at this point. We didn't get an edge rusher. We didn't get a receiver. So those are really the three positions that have not been and then tied in, which it's not necessarily a need. We brought in Harrison Bryant to be our number two guy. We still have Cole Fotheringham, a few other guys. What do you want to do right here? I'm looking at some someone that has some high-end trait. Okay. Someone that has a high end trait here. Uh, There's two guys back to back right there. I'm not going to be the guy to tell you, but uh, Nehemiah Pritchett, the corner out of Auburn. Yeah, I saw. I was looking at that. He could be one of those uh, guys. And then Caden Wallace out of Penn State can be a guy that could potentially start from you uh, for you down the line. What is uh, um, 
Is Brandon Coleman still out there? He's, he's off the board. Fuck. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. He, he was out, damn. I think he was going in like the fourth round. Was he? Gabriel Murphy's there too. Is he? Yeah. Edge rusher. Okay. I like that. Let me take a look at Gabriel Murphy, man. 6'2", 247. Doesn't have any uh, any info on it yet, but you you know. He's you athletic, know. though. He is super yeah. athletic. He he is a prototype. He is like a Malcolm Kuntz esh There you go. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and go and do that. I love it. I love it. All right, one more pick right here. This All is, right. This is where you can just say, hey, I'm just looking for somebody that could potentially make this roster – I, you know, I, I like at this point you're going potential in the seventh round. Let's let's go let's go with the receiver. Okay. I want a, I want a guy. With, with, I mean, let's see. Now I've took this guy a million times in my late round, guys. I like Isaiah Williams, Anthony Gold at Oregon State. You know, prolific yeah. special teams guy can return kicks. Um, he can also give you some reps from the slot. Um, and then Xavier Weaver. He had a really good year with Colorado this this last season. I think he had about. I think seven, eight hundred yards uh, receiving. Um, there, there's a few options there. There's a few options there. You know, um, let me see. Small school guys, Jalen Gill. I, I think because of more because of the familiarity, uh, I probably go with 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 Gould. Okay, I like that. I mean, because look, honestly, at at this at this point. These these guys are going to be special teams guys, and you know if they crack the if they crack uh, the starting lineup, that's a bonus. Yeah. But what we're doing is we're filling young talent in, in positions of need. We we lost Hunter Renfro, we lost mm -hmm. uh, Cole, you know. So we we're we're, we're we got to backfill some of that stuff. And I love it because now you don't necessarily have to have Trey Tucker do anything in terms of special teams. You got a guy that can be a starter in, in the slot. Where you don't have to have him go out there and field kicks. Anthony Go, that, that would be his bread and butter right there. I think this is great, man. Quinion Mitchell, I think he's gonna be a future all pro. This is literally my favorite corner in this draft. Michael Pennish Jr., I've been screaming from the mountaintops for him all since last year. I think that he could be a phenomenal guy with what we got going on. Peyton Wilson, bro. I think you hit if he makes it to the third round, it's only because of the injury history. The medical, yeah. That's the only way he falls. This, this, this the, I mean, bro, sideline to sideline, thumper against the run, can play in coverage. I mean, this guy does it all. Uh, Braden Allen, one of my favorite running backs in this year's draft, bro. Like we, we talked about him early on. Big body guy, um, can run over, he can truck anybody. Zach Zinter, a guy that may have to red shirt year one because of the injuries, but he can be a potential. Pro Bowl, All Pro guy for you down the line. If he's not ready this year, I love the pickup. Uh, Sion Vaki, man, that's another guy. We said it a million times on this show. Both of our starting safeties on the last year of the deal. So I love, I love this move because Marcus Epps can move on, and we potentially we don't pay Mary because let's just say we end up paying Malcolm and Nate Hobbs, and then Divine Diablo, you know, and, and Mary are cap casualties. Let's just say that we can't pay all of them. You potentially draft his replacement right here with Vaki, which I, I still want to see what Chris Smith can do. I want to see what Paula Mal can do this year with more reps. But I love that pick in the later rounds. Gabriel Bro, Murphy. Mal, dude, whenever he goes in the game, he makes plays. He doesn't oh, play yeah. a ton, but whenever oh, yeah. he's in there, because I remember him at SC, and I'm like, man, every time he's in the game, he freaking makes plays. Yeah, yeah. I love your draft, man. Gabriel Murphy, Anthony Gold, phenomenal, phenomenal draft. Salute to Spivey. OLV wasted in wind bags. You keep it right or real. Much a support. Fuaga, O-line, good for a decade. I agree with you on that. And uh, thank you for the kind words, my brother, as always. Salute to you, man. A plus, A plus. I see a B. A plus, A plus. A lot of A pluses, man. Great 707 draft. I love it. Not a bad draft at all. Okay, so yeah, that, that's what it was, Dan. Yeah, he had 908 yards receiving six tutties. Uh, so we had a, he had a great year for them last year. But um, we took gold. So great, great grades right there, man. Um, salute, man, to everybody here in the building. Once again, man, brother, I appreciate you as always, man, for pulling up Thank and rocking with me. Hey, let everybody know where they can follow you at, man. Yo, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Wonderful. That's uh, M R J U A N D E R F U double L 42. Mr. Wonderful 42 on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Same thing on Instagram. Also, the autumn windbags on Instagram. Uh, just the windbags. Uh, on what an X now Twitter whatever I don't know what it's called now. <laughs> whatever that is uh, look out for something new I got something cooking okay uh, 
I'm trying to do something a little bit. I'm a, I love the Raiders, but I also love football. So I want to try something a little bit different. Not as deep as I go with the Raiders with the entire NFL. Maybe just the big games. Mm-hmm. Maybe just like uh, why certain players had big games. Just focusing on certain players from different teams. Okay. Uh, it's it's gonna it's called El Maloso Soto. So Maloso is a bad guy. Like Razor Ramon, the bad guy, right? I love so it. El I love Maloso, because look, I'm going to talk good and bad about every team in the NFL. So sooner or later, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be a bad guy to you, right? Okay. I'm going to talk shit on your team. So that's coming it. up. Hopefully, it comes up starting. And I'm just kind of ironing out some things to make sure I can get, I can get the right amount of content out. Okay, I love it, man. Once again, you guys go support our brother, the Autumn Windbag. Salute to our guy RJ too, as well, man. Putting in that work with the UFC. And doing his stuff, man. Salute to Jenny. Hey, Juan, your channel is leather. See, now when we say leather around here, Juan, that means you A1, bro. That means your shit is 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 thank wow. you, Jenny. Much appreciated. Yeah, so much appreciated over here. Yeah, man. Once again, man, salute to everybody. Hey, let's let's do this, man. Let's double, let's double back after the draft. Let's let's go over our picks. Yeah, man. I would love to have you back on. You know what? I want to get you on wasted too. I think it'd be fun for us three to, you know, us old heads talk some talk some bro, football bro. together. This I don't have this because it helps me get chicks, bro. <laughs> this, is, this, this white i'm growing the beard out but it's like it just won't stop i'm like why is it, if i cut it short it looks like you know a little bit bad. Yeah. But this is like a lot and my chicks like don't don't do it don't do it don't color it just leave it leave it i like it i'm like all right Bro. you like it i love it i'm cool with it i got a couple i got maybe a year or two left for mine but before this shit go completely salt and all the pepper gone so hey oh i got a little pep i got a little pepper still left but other than that, <laughs> hey man, you know, you man, man, hey we repping that silver and black you already know Deal, dealing with these fighters, bro. <laughs> these, oh my god, look at even my camera starting to mess around, dude. He, dealing with these fighters, bro. Uh, <laughs> that, that will age you quick. So they just make some decisions. Yo, like, yo, man, I know I gotta weigh in tomorrow, but I just had a McChicken. Like, bro, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> you waited like nine hours. Yo, salute, man. Keep doing your thing over there, man. And, and real quick, salute to the chat, too. Uh, tomorrow we got Murph. We got Swag Jeff coming on the show early nice. in the afternoon. And then tomorrow night we got San GT coming on the show tomorrow Ooh, as well. So double header tomorrow. So, you know, I just want to thank you, brother, because like I said before, man, sometimes we got to get the Avengers together and let the people know just because we all don't do shows together doesn't mean that we don't rock with each other, man. You know what I mean? It's always love. And, you know, and, and I, I see what you guys do and I try to pop in as much as, as I can. And, yeah, you know, I just want to say, man, I appreciate yeah. and, and whatever I can do, man, to, to help. It, 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 shit, lend some eyes, you know what I mean, to what you, new, what you got going on with the new stuff, I would love to, bro. Just let me know, man, and, you know, I'll, I'll share it in my community tab. I just, I want to see you guys continue to do great things, and what you guys are doing is phenomenal, man. I see the channel growing. I know you guys, what, 11, 12,000 subscribers right, now? We're, all, we're almost 10. The, the weird thing about what RJ and I is, RJ's got two jobs, right? He's got the Sirius XM radio show, and uh-huh. he has, he's, he's a producer for the UFC, and then I have my day job, and then I also coach at the gym. So this is like our each of our third thing. Yeah. So it's like we can't put out the amount of content that we want to, but that's why we we try to make the content that we do put out yes. just hit. We try yeah. it because I would love to like just be able to make content every single night. I would yeah. love to do that. But if I yeah. do that, it's not going to be good because I don't have the amount of time I need to do it. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, I don't mind. Like – I'm not at the gym tonight because I wanted to be here, but it's, yeah. but I mean, I can do that every now and then, but you know, when you're a coach, you do run strength and conditioning for these guys. You got to make sure they work out. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yo man, I, I want to say this. I appreciate you, man. Honestly, like I don't understand why people are so weird out there about just being good to each other. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, man. No, nothing ever happened good when you put your ego ahead of doing what's right. Yeah. And 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 when we connected, we uh, RJ reached out to you initially, and we started talking, and uh, you know we connected on a lot of different things, man. And when good people get together, good things happen, right? So Definitely. I appreciate you. You know, I see what you're doing here with your channel, bro. It's it, it makes me happy. Like when when I meet somebody with the Ra- with Raider gear on, I know they're a Raider fan because no one's just gonna wear a random Raider gear, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, man, are you a real Raider fan? What do they say? They almost get mad at me, like, fuck yeah, man, I'm a real Raider. All right, cool. Who do you watch? Who do you listen to? Yeah. And I always bring you up, man. I'm like, dude, you got to watch these dudes. And I'm all, I got a channel, but also this dude got a channel. This dude got a channel. You go, give me your phone. 
Let's go. Ahead. Let's do it right now. And I, and and that's what we do, man. Like I always, one, bro. I do, one. it's like I always do that, man. I don't understand why people try to be weird out there about this stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know, I appreciate what you're doing with your channel for the fans out there because honestly, like I can't get enough either. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know they can't. I know you can't. I can't get bro, it. We, we love this team, bro. Like it just, it's in us, man. It's not on us. You know what I mean? So all day, brother, anytime, man, you, you know, RJ's not around and you want to do a show. I would love for you to send the invite, put the bass signal up. I'll come back over there and let's run it back up over there, man. On, on the auto win, uh, win bass channel. I love, I love to do it, brother. Let's do it. We'll do it again. Let's get it. My brother. Once again, you guys on the way out, wipe them feet. Y'all hit them thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, Hit that subscribe button. OaklawsVegas.com. Go get some drip. PlanetRaiders.com. Big Mike has been putting that work in on our website. A bunch of new uh, uh, articles up. He has been putting that pen to the paper, going crazy with these draft prospects. And then um, other than that, man, I don't win bags. Go subscribe. I see a bunch of people did tonight. Run that shit up. I don't care if they're live once a week. Guess what? They put on great content, man. They deserve to be 20, 30, 40, 50,000 subscribers. Go over there and run them numbers up, man. Real talk. Salute to the greatest chat in the universe. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. My brother, we're going to talk soon, man. For sure, man. I'm out. Wow.